also believe that the Jews were literally children of the devil. The 30 years leading to the formation of the Vril Society was an era obsessed with the strange combination of racial solidarity and the occult. Magic and occult ideas dominated thinking of virtually every class of society in the late 19th century. But of all the mystics of the time, one person's writings may have been the genesis of the phenomenal occult frenzy. Madame Elaine Patrova Blavatsky. I would say that Blavatsky provided the metaphysical framework that has gathered together the vast, vast streams of the ancient wisdom into a coherent system. Blavatsky founded the Theosophical Society in 1875 and established herself as a kind of sage in the occult realm. Theosophists believe in a combination of Asian and occult ideas to promote the concept of a superior Aryan race. She traveled throughout the world for spiritual reasons. Madame Blavatsky wrote, well, several books, but the particularly influential one was The Secret Doctrine. It was based on knowledge she acquired in India and Tibet. She claimed that she got her teachings from secret messages from Mahatmas in the Himalayas. This groundbreaking book, written in 1885, did something no other book had ever done. It combined science and religion. Some branches of late 19th century European philosophy drew inspiration from a combination of the occult and Eastern mysticism. One leading proponent of these concepts was Madame Patrova Blavatsky, who managed to combine the precepts of both religion and science. Suddenly science, like with Darwin, had seemed to destroy the possibility of religion, and Blavatsky was showing, oh, you can still be believe in evolution and yet be religious, because it was, this is how it works, you know. Her writings included anti-Semitic notions that fueled later groups like the Vril Society. The secret doctrine had an extreme racist view. Some interpret her writings to say that Semitic people had not evolved as far as the Aryans. But she was actually writing of the ancient Aryans, whose Indo-Iranian name means noble. They had simply migrated further than other races, and so they were more evolved. The misrepresentation of Aryan is we are the master race. Blavatsky's ancient Aryans were not the same as Hitler's 20th century Aryan race. The secret doctrine clearly had anti-Semitic and racist undertones. This is the danger of letting out high-level truths because of the danger of misrepresentation. The Secret Doctrine was written as a spiritual teaching and a kind of esoteric study of evolution, not an inspiration for the master race. But the racial aspects were the ones that particularly, obviously, appealed to the Nazis. The world has shown the ghastly effects of twisting what is sacred knowledge and perverting it to one's own personal ends. When the Vril Society was founded, Blavatsky's teachings were more popular in Germany than anywhere else in the world. Seriously, it was that influential on German thought, it really was. Like the coming race, Blavatsky's book was misunderstood and its ideas were twisted to support the many other racist philosophies rampant in Europe. So, by 1918, the time was ripe for the formation of the Vril Society and the search for ultimate power. Vril? Vril. Vril. The Vril Society saw this power as a kind of metaphysical petrol. The Germans needed it because Germany, as we know, did not have fossil fuel reserves. They had a method of creating uh, synthetic fuels, but they were in desperate need for other energies. In addition to their occult methods for finding this energy, they began an actual quest for the all-important Vril. They followed in Blavatsky's footsteps to Tibet. Vril Society member Karl Haushofer organized expeditions to Tibet beginning in 1923. Their mission? Contacting the Aryan forefathers in the cities deep underneath the Himalayas. 
they would certainly be the guardians of the Vril. And by the third trip, they were measuring the skulls of the locals, convinced the Tibetans were the Aryan ancestors. Eventually, Hitler formed a Nazi organization to track the Aryan race. They spent more money on that than the United States did on the development of the atomic bomb. That would be $20 billion in today's terms. For work that, frankly, produced no tangible results. And so, in the end, the Germans left. But whether they found Vril there or not, the Germans did bring back one very important thing from Tibetan culture, something Blavatsky had waxed poetic about in The Secret Doctrine. Within its mystical precincts lies the master key which opens the door of every science, physical as well as spiritual. How could Madame Blavatsky have known this mystical figure would become the symbol of hate? A great many of the Vril Society members were conscious Satanists. And these evil men were emblazoned with a symbol, the swastika. Its mystical resonance was of great interest to the Vril Society, and by 1920, it would virtually belong to the Nazis. Previously, though, the swastika had been a symbol of luck and good fortune in Asia. A lot of persons these days forget that before it became an ominous symbol in Nazi Germany, the swastika was to be found everywhere. It was originally meant as a symbol of good fortune. It took on a very tangible meaning, that of the letter G, and for Freemasons, the word geometry. Well, not only did it stand for geometry and math and so on, but it stood for Nordic, the old Norse gods. It was a symbol of Thor. There was a village in Canada called Swastika, and they had a female hockey team called the Swastikas with the Swastika embroidered on their skirts, and it makes very lovely photos. By 1920, it was no longer a benign symbol. In adopting the Swastika, the Nazis did make one significant alteration. Hitler and his cohorts did a funny thing. They changed the direction of the swastika. It no longer turned to the right. His concept of the swastika was very influential. Hitler's swastika turned in the opposite direction, to the left. And the left-hand path is synonymous with evil. The left-hand path, which is something that clearly uh, derives from Roman mythology and in fact all mythologies, where the evil gods are centered on the left side and the good gods are centered on the right side. This is Hitler's swastika in 1920. It quickly became embedded in Nazi culture, and a variation of it has become known as a sign of the Vril Society. It's found here, in Wevelsberg Castle, the home of Heinrich Himmler, commander of the SS and a suspected member of the Vril Society. He was frantically searching for various means of winning the war, and in the end, one can say it turned him insane. Although, in my opinion, the seeds of his insanity were already there. Himmler, of course, was probably the most lunatic of any senior Nazi party member. He was mystical, he was a dreamer. He was a real junkie for every cult and wacky idea going. And he was an architect of Nazi ideology. There are fascinating photos, and this I've never understood, of Himmler with his 12-year-old daughter visiting a concentration camp, a death camp. Now, who on earth would take his 12-year-old daughter to a death camp? Perhaps only a man obsessed with absolute power would do that. And such a man would be the perfect candidate to renovate a 16th century castle as a real centerpiece. Within this castle, we find a richness of symbols, of signs, and of occult things of significance that point towards his, well, the fulfillment of his dreams. The North Tower holds the darkest symbols. The North Tower clearly is the embodiment of all that Himmler felt was dear and precious to him, and it points towards an occult significance uh, in his philosophies. A feature of the tower was the solar wheel, or black sun, the occult symbol for the Vril Society. <laughs> 